I'm joined by David Silverman. He's president of American Atheists. He was at Fox News during the segment where Gretchen Carlson very animatedly expressed her disdain that a Festivus poll would have the audacity to be allowed to share space with a nativity scene. Earlier on the show today, we also spoke about the clip where Megyn Kelly explored whether Santa was white or not, and then it led her to talk about Jesus obviously being white. So, David, let's start first with the Gretchen Carlson Festivus poll thing. I found it fascinating that part of her anger was that Festivus was a made up holiday when I'm thinking in some sense, no matter what you believe in, all of the holidays are made up, aren't they? Yes, they're they're all made up and they're all uh, and of course all religions are made up and she really doesn't like the fact that that's being thrust in front of her. Um, you know, she if you, in that same interview she said, "What? Uh, Christianity is not the first comp is is not the first religion to have the solstice? What? Christianity stole the holiday? Come on." They 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 make up their stories, they make up their narratives. And what we're seeing between if you look at uh, if you look at this season, this, this season on Fox News, uh, Gretchen and Megan and Hannity and O'Reilly, they're all about privilege. They're all about their Christian privilege being attacked. They want their manger, they want their nativity and nothing else. If you're going to put in a Jewish thing, they'll tolerate it because they feel like they have to. And but in part, I feel like that's specific because there is still this underlying thing from Christians where maybe soon they'll convert the Jews into believing in Jesus. So I almost feel like Judaism is accepted from criticism because of that hope that exists. And, and because of the Holocaust guilt. Right. Okay. It, it, there's a lot of Holocaust guilt. Everybody's afraid to be labeled as an anti Semite. Um, so they like the Jews and they'll accept the Jews and they call themselves <laughs> Judeo Christians. But when you say, hey, you know what? You are, in fact, equal to Satanists. You are, in fact, equal to atheists. You are, in fact, equal to Muslims in the eyes of the law. They don't like that. They want to be above. They want to be on top. They want to be special. That's why they push the whole concept of, well, we're a Christian nation of Christian majority and blah, 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 blah. You, we, they know it's a lie and they know that the Christian majority is irrelevant. They know it, but they won't say it because they want that privilege. And that's what all this anger that you're seeing, oh, there was a Festivus pole next to the next to the manger, and if I come at it from a certain angle, the baby Jesus will be hidden by the Festivus pole. Well, yeah, and if you come at it from another angle, the Festivus pole will be hidden by the baby Jesus. And that offends me just as much. Well, no, it doesn't. The, the whole concept is that everybody owns the center square equally and Christianity does not have an advantage. They want that advantage. They seethe with anger when that advantage is challenged because in order for them to fight us, in order for them to really take on our issues during this season, they have to admit that they are not pushing the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. They must admit that what they are trying to do to us is push inequality on us, which they would not want pushed onto them. They are breaking their own golden rule, they are going against the American way, and they are pushing for a theocracy, and they know it, and they don't like it, but they're doing it anyways because it benefits them. I'm so very, I, yeah. I'm, I'm very interested in the war on Christmas narrative, not because I think it's a real narrative, but because I'm fascinated by how much play it continues to get. And it, it's very interesting because then when we talk about the war on Christmas, it doesn't really exist. Here's all you need to know about it. I get emails from people saying, David, why are you so anti Christianity? Why are you focused on Christianity? And I always have the same response, which is we happen to be doing an American politics show and here the strongest forces trying to impose religion within the legal system, within the system of government, happen to be Christians. If we were in the Middle East, I'd probably be focusing on Islam. And that gets me to this issue, David, which is the elements of Islam invading the legal and government system that Christians oppose in the Middle East, they seem to favor here in the United States, whether it's using sacred texts to limit marriage equality or abortion 
or as we're talking about here, placing Christianity above other religions when it comes to city or government displays, etc. I've had no success in communicating the double standard that exists there. I don't know if you've had any success. No, I haven't. Uh, in, a, in a recent uh, Gretchen Carlson debate, we talked about the pastor in Iran who was left in jail uh, when they negotiated the um, when they negotiated the nuclear treaty with Senator Kerry, or I don't know what his title is, Secretary, Secretary of, of State. Yeah, yeah, um, and they were all upset about this pastor who was just preaching Christianity who is in jail, and they wouldn't hear and didn't care about the non-Christians that are in jail. They don't care about that. They didn't care about all the other non. Christian players, they didn't care about the uh, the atheists who are in jail in Pakistan for doing the exact same crime uh, because they're very, very me-centric. They're very, very Christian-centric. So they will do things uh, when it's to their advantage and they will block it out and block their ears and la, 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 la when it's not to their advantage. It's fundamentally dishonest and that's where we have to challenge them. That's where we have to say, hey, you know what, you're totally being hypocritical here. Aren't we all here to benefit all humans? Isn't this bad for everybody? Isn't it bad for everybody to be put in jail because of a blasphemy law, not just Christians? And really push it. And then when they come out and they say, all right, well, you're offending me, and I say, well, you know what? That's exactly what the Muslims say to you. Uh, what do you say to the Muslims? Uh, they don't even like that analogy. They don't even uh, acknowledge that analogy because they will not acknowledge that they are actually behaving like the Muslims they hate so much. You mentioned the word offended, and that's the, the other thing I wanted to touch on with you, which is this concept of being offended around religion. And I always think back to an interview I did a couple years ago with a Christian homeschooler, and I was talking to him about how increasingly Christian homeschooled students are not prepared when it comes to science and so many other areas. And I told him pretty plainly, if you have curriculum based around the idea that a man in the sky, X, Y, Z, born to a virgin, etc., doesn't it follow logically that you may not be fully prepared to take on science in the same way somebody who had a more traditional science education is? And he said, David, I am deeply offended by your question and by your, your implications about my friend, Jesus Christ. And so I, no, answer it anyways. Right, right. <laughs> so, so, so the question I'm getting to is, why why is the, has this issue of being offended taken on almost like ki a kid gloves mentality where when you're talking about whether it's Jesus or Abraham or Muhammad or whatever, if you question anything there, and you may be questioning it not out of a vindictive uh, place, but simply out of good faith, wanting to know because some of the story doesn't add up, people get offended. And to me, that suggests we should be questioning and we should be asking questions. But for some reason, the offense claim seems to shut down debate. Right. And, and because in some countries, uh, most notably in, in Europe uh, and in England, it does. In England, they, we don't have a freedom of speech. They don't have a freedom of speech. You're not allowed to offend people. They have a right not to be offended. In America, they don't. So as people are looking at Europe, they say, okay, well, you can't do that. That's offensive. You see the, uh, the Muslims crying, oh, you can't write this down. You can't make this cartoon. It offends us. And therefore, people go to jail for it. Uh, people in this country kind of forget about the whole fact that we're a different country, that we have different laws here, and that we have freedom of speech, and that you being offended uh, doesn't matter. You could always respond with, well, I'm getting, I get offended by religion all the time. I get offended when religion takes money out of my pocket to fund itself via higher taxes. I get offended when somebody forces my politicians to talk about God, but this isn't about offense. Um, they, they use the offensive, they use the I am offended as a defense against your question. They don't want to answer your question. They know you're right. So they use the, I'm offended you asked me that question, and then they don't avoid the question, which is why the correct answer to I'm offended is so noted, now please answer the question. Mm. Okay, just, okay, you're offended, great, I get it, now answer the question. Don't you think this is true? Don't you think your substandard education is going to hurt you? Well, that offends me, I understand. Don't you think it's true, though? <laughs> I think you're yeah. right. I think you're right. That is the way to focus on it. And at the time, being less experienced, I actually was scared off by I'm offended and I didn't follow up the way I should have. Last thing, David, when you were sitting there after the segment with Gretchen Carlson, you've got Rabbi Shmuley Boktich on your on your left, 
I think it was, was it Bill Donahue on your right? Yep. What happens after the cameras go off? Is it very awkward in that room? No, 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 no. Um, it, it's, it's all right. We understand what we're doing. We understand what we're, uh, what we're trying to do. Um, the cameras go dark. Everybody smiles. We say that was a good show. Uh, we gather around Gretchen. I don't know if you, if you watch Gretchen's Facebook page, um, she posts pictures of herself with the three of us standing there behind her. That's after the show, not before. Does Shmuley try to pull you back into Judaism, knowing that you were you were born, I guess, you know, to a to a, a Jewish family? Does he try to bring you back in? Uh, no, not yet. <laughs> but he will. And, and, and when he does, I will try and pull him out. <laughs> All right. David <laughs> Silverman, president of American Atheists. Thanks again for being on. Dave, thanks for having me on your show. I really appreciate it. Oh, and one more thing. Our national convention's coming up on in Easter weekend in uh, Salt Lake City. We've got a fantastic roster, and you can buy tickets at atheists.org.